The Gospel of Barnabas, edited and translated from the Italian manuscript in the Imperial Library at Vienna, by Lonsdale and Laura Rogg. This is from 1907, the Common Era. 163. Jesus went into the wilderness beyond Jordan with his disciples, and when the midday prayer, you know, early afternoon, was done, he sat down near to a palm tree, and under the shadow of the palm tree his disciples sat down. Then, said Jesus, so secret is predestination, O brethren, that I say unto you, verily, only to one man shall it be clearly known. He it is whom the nations look for, to whom the secrets of God are so clear that when he cometh into the world, blessed shall they be that shall listen to his words, because God shall overshadow them with his mercy, even as this palm tree overshadoweth us, yea, even as this tree protecteth us from the burning heat of the sun, even so the mercy of God will protect from Satan them that believe in that man. The disciples answered, O Master, who shall that man be of whom thou speakest? Who shall come into the world? Jesus answered with joy of heart, He is Muhammad, messenger of God. And when he cometh into the world, even as the rain maketh the earth to bear fruit for a long time. It hath not rained, even so shall he be occasion of good works among men, through the abundant mercy which he shall bring. For he is a white cloud full of the mercy of God, which mercy God shall sprinkle upon the faithful like rain. And... Of course, all names mean something. So it wasn't readily apparent that the Mechmed of the Bible and the um, translate uh, Paraclotus or Paracletus or something like that, um, also of the Bible, was the same Ahmed Muhammad that the Quran came through. Um, chapter 164. I will accordingly tell you now that little which God hath granted me to know concerning this same predestination. The Pharisees say that everything hath been so predestined that he who is elect cannot become reprobate, and he who is reprobate cannot by any means become elect, and that even as God hath predestined well-doing as the road whereby the elect shall walk unto salvation, even so hath he predestined sin as the road by which the reprobate shall walk into damnation. Cursed be the tongue that said this, with the hand that wrote it, for this is the faith of Satan. Wherefore, one may know of what manner are the Pharisees of the present day. For they are faithful servants of Satan. What can predestination mean but an absolute will to give an end to a thing whereof one hath the means in hand? For without the means one cannot destine an end. How then shall he destine the house, who not only lacketh stone and money to spend, but hath not even so much land as to place one foot upon? Assuredly, none could do so, could do so, is in brackets, so it's not part of the translation. Uh, no more than, I tell you, is predestination taking away the free will that God hath given to man of his pure bounty, the law of God, of a surety, it is not predestination, but abomination. We shall be establishing that free, that man is free of the book of Moses. Uh, that man is free, the book of Moses showeth, where our God gave the law upon Mount Sinai. He spake thus, My commandment is not 
in the heaven, that thou shouldest excuse thyself, saying, Now who shall go to bring us the commandment of God? And who, perchance, shall give us strength to observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea, that in like manner thou shouldest excuse thyself. But my commandment is nigh unto thine heart, that when thou wilt, thou mayest observe it. Tell me, if King Herod should command an old man to become young, and a sick man, that he should become whole, and when they did it, should not cause them to be killed, would this be just? The disciples answered, If Herod gave this command, he would be the most unjust and impious. Then Jesus, sighing, said, These are the fruits of human traditions, O brethren. For in saying that God hath predestined the reprobate in such wise that he cannot become elect, they blaspheme God as impious and unjust. For he commandeth the sinner not to sin, and when he sinneth, to repent. When such predestination taketh away from the sinner his power, not to sin, and entirely depriveth him of repentance. So predestination is, you know, the situation and what you make of the situation, right? But it's still you that have made your decisions that have their consequences. 165. But hear what saith God by Joel the prophet, as I live, saith your God. saith this in brackets. I will not the death of a sinner, but I seek that he should be converted to penitence. Will God then predestinate that which he willeth not? Consider ye that which God saith, and that which the Pharisees of this present time say. Further, God saith by the prophet Isaiah, I have called, and ye would not hearken unto me. And how much God hath called Hear how he saith by the same prophet, All the day have I spread out my hands to a people that believe me not, but contradict me. And our Pharisees, when they say that the reprobate cannot become elect, what they say, they then, but that God mocketh men, even as he would mock a blind man who should show himself something white, and as he would mock a deaf man who should speak into his ears, and that the elect can be reprobated. Consider what God saith by Ezekiel the prophet, As I live, saith God, if the righteous shall forsake his righteousness, and shall do abominations, he shall perish, and I will not remember any more any of his righteousness, for trusting therein it shall forsake him before me, and it shall not save him. And of the calling of the reprobate, what saith God by the prophet Hosea but this? I will call a people not elect. I will call them elect. God is true and cannot tell a lie. For God being truth speaketh truth. But the Pharisees of this present time with their doctrine contradict God altogether. And one of the things that we uh, run into is that just like the Bible seems to mix generations, and label it as one generation, this text apparently is doing that too. Um, Because Herod was the later generation, not of the same, but um, 166. Andrew replied, But how is that to be understood? Which God said to Moses, But that he will have mercy on whom he willeth to have mercy, and will harden whom he willeth to harden. Jesus answered, God saith this in order that man may not believe that he is saved by his own virtue, but may perceive that life and the mercy of God hath been granted him by God of his bounty. And he saith it in order that men may shun the opinion that there be other gods than he. If, therefore, he hardened Pharaoh, he did it because he had afflicted our people, and essayed to bring it to naught by destroying all the male children in Israel, whereby Moses was nigh to losing his life. Accordingly, I say unto you verily, that predestination hath for its foundation the law of God and human free will. Yea, and even if God should save the whole world so that none should perish, he would not will do so. 
lest thus he should deprive man of freedom, which he preserveth to him in order to despite dis Satan, in order that this lump of lump of is in brackets clay scorned of the spirit, even though it shall sin as the spirit did, may have power to repent and go to dwell in that place whence the spirit was cast out. Our God willeth, I say, to pursue with his mercy man's free will, and willeth not to forsake the creature with his omnipotence. And so on the day of judgment none will be able to make excuse for their sins, seeing that it will then manifest to them how much God hath done for their conversion, and how often he hath called them to repentance. And so the hardening of the heart and all that is like, well, it's that these hearts have been set up. Are but the emotional ism, which is more than the heart, but the um, you know it, it's been set up in a certain way, and if people cross certain boundaries, then you know they step over a certain point and they don't come back. Um, much like how you see that drugs will damage people. Um, you know, and how how much of it does it take for a person to be, become addicted? It you know varies per person. A hundred and sixty-seven. Accordingly, if your mind will not rest content in this, and ye be fain to say again, why so? I will disclose to you a wherefore. It is this. Tell me, wherefore cannot a single stone rest on the top of the water? Yet the whole earth. Resteth on top of the water. Tell me, why is that? While water extinguisheth fire, and earth fleeth from air, so that none can unite earth, air, water, and fire in harmony. Nevertheless, they are united in man, and are preserved harmoniously. Well, we have different categories and whatnot, too. I, I think I mentioned the Goetia the other day, and the Goetia... You could say are 72 categories in which um, humans are divided into, and there are spirits that react upon that, right? You know, if they're allowed to. If then ye know not this, nay, all men as men cannot know it, how shall they understand that God created the universe out of nothing with a single word? How shall they understand the eternity of God? Assuredly, they shall by no means be able to understand this, because man, being finite, composite with the body, which, as saith the prophet Solomon, being corruptible, presseth down the soul, and the works of God being proportionate to God, how shall they be able to comprehend them? Isaiah the prophet of God, seeing it to be, thus exclaimed, saying, Verily thou art a hidden God, and of his messenger of God, how God hath created him. He saith, His generation who shall narrate? And of the working of God he saith, Who hath been his counselor? Wherefore, God saith unto human nature, Even as the heaven is exalted above the earth, so are my ways exalted above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. You know, because we, we don't need just some scribes writing books. We need the generation, the people at large, relating about um, a prophet or the prophets. or you know. Therefore I say unto you, the manner of predestination is not manifest to men, albeit the fact is true, as I have told you. Ought man then, because he cannot find out the mode to deny the fact? Assuredly, I have never yet seen any one refuse help, though the manner of it be not understood. For I know not even now how God by my touch healeth the sick. 168. Then the disciples said, Verily God speaketh in thee, for never hath man spoken as thou speakest. Jesus answered, Believe me, when God chose me to send me to the house of Israel, he gave me a book, like unto a clear mirror, which came down into my heart, in such wise that all that I speaketh cometh from that book. And when... That book 
shall have finished coming forth from my mouth. I shall be taken up from the world. Peter answered, O Master, is that which thou now speakest written in that book? Jesus replied, All that I say for the knowledge of God and the service of God, for the knowledge of man, for the salvation of mankind, all this cometh forth from that book, which is my gospel. Said Peter, Is there written therein the glory of paradise? The glory of paradise, chapter 169. Jesus answered, Hearken, and I will tell you of what manner is paradise, and how the holy and faithful shall abide there without end. For this is one of the greatest blessings of paradise, seeing that everything, however great, if it have an end, becometh small, yea, not. Paradise is the home where God storeth his delights, which are so great that the ground which is trodden by the feet of the holy and blessed ones is so precious that one drachm of it is more precious than a thousand words. These delights were seen by our father David, prophet of God, for God showed them unto him seeing he caused him to behold the glories of paradise, whereupon he returned to himself, closed his eyes with both his hands, and weeping said, Look not any more upon this world, O mine eyes, for all is vain, and there is no good. Of these delights, said Isaiah the prophet, the eyes of man have not seen, his ears have not heard, nor hath the human heart conceived, that which God hath prepared for them that love him. Know ye wherefore, they have not seen, heard, conceived such de delights. It is because, while they live here below, they are not worthy to behold such things. Wherefore, albeit our father David verily slew them, I tell you that he saw, him so he saw them not with human eyes, for God took his soul into himself, and thus, united with God, he saw them with light divine. People act like, oh, I don't see that, well, you know, if someone's having a vision that's even psychological, it doesn't mean they're, they're crazy. Because um, certainly we have different psych uh, psychologies and one person having a dream that other people don't have, but sometimes people have the same. But certainly the spiritual things, um, you know, we act like we're going to have ma material manifestation and prove it on camera and stuff like this. It's like, you know, I, th I think a lot more people than currently do would buy such and such as... Um, video courses or such and such as video courses or something that stuff was true but as god liveth in whose presence my soul standeth seeing that the delights of paradise are infinite and man is finite man cannot contain them even as a little earthen jar cannot contain the sea behold then how beautiful is the world in summertime and all things bear fruit the very pleasant intoxicated with gladness by reason of the harvest that is come, maketh the valleys and mountains resound with his singing, for that he loveth his labors supremely. Now lift up, even so your hearts, to paradise, where all things are fruitful with fruits proportionate to him who hath cultivated it. As God liveth, this is sufficient for the knowledge of paradise. For as much as God hath created paradise for the home of his own delights, now think ye that immeasurable goodness would not have things immeasurably good, or that immeasurable beauty would not have things immeasurably beautiful. Beware, for ye err greatly, if ye think ye have them not. And if something's needed, maybe not needed for our things, but, uh, you know, if something would be beneficial, it seems. Don't, don't say that um, God can't do it. God will do it if, if he wants. 170. God saith thus to the man, you shall faithfully serve him. I know thy works, that thou workest for me. As I live eternally, thy love shall not exceed my bounty, because thou servest me as God thy creator, knowing thyself to be my work, and accept not of me, save grace and mercy to serve me faithfully because thou settest no end to my service, seeing thou desirest to serve me eternally. Even so will I do, for I will reward thee as if thou wert God, mine equal. 
For not only will I place in thy hands the abundance of paradise, but I will give thee myself as a gift, so that even as thou art fain to be my servant forever, even so will I make thy wages forever. 171. You know, cause people talk about this, this karmic thing. And, well, yeah, but God is more merciful than that. 171. What think ye, said Jesus to his disciples, a paradise? Is there a mind that could comprehend such riches and delights? Man must needs have a knowledge as great as God's, if he would know that God, what he willeth, to give to his servants. Have ye seen, when Herod maketh a present to one of his favorite barons, in which sort presenteth he it? John answered, I have seen it twice, and assuredly the tenth part of that which he giveth would be sufficient for a poor man, said Jesus. But if a poor man shall be presented to Herod, what will he give to him? John answered, One or two mites. Now let this be your book wherein to study the knowledge of paradise, said Jesus, because all that God hath given to man in this present world for his body is as though Herod should give a mite to a poor man, but what God will give to the body and soul in paradise is as though Herod should give all that he hath, yea, and his own life to one of his servants. And... Yeah, all these bounties on earth are the smallest portion. Think of that 63, 64.